19th week that we've honored the world, deceased World War II veterans. We started on the 29th of June. Uh, this will be the last for a couple of weeks. Uh, at this point, we'll have honored uh, 57 men, individual men, and another 57 with the Warner Massive Fire Department and First Aid Squad. Uh, uh, we will have one last flag raising and lowering on December 7th. We'll be at 4.30, and at that point, we will honor everybody. We'll send invitations to everybody. Uh, there will be a handout with, with everybody's name uh, that has participated in this. Would you please just rise for the flag salute? I'd pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice, and Tonight, well, as, as I've said on many other weeks, all right, December 7th, which was almost 41 years ago, uh, we were propelled into a war that we really didn't want to be in. And 10 million men and 350,000 women answered the call to serve their country. And we are now uh, we are honoring the deceased World War II veterans who were the ones who have been able to give us the type of life that we love and enjoy here in the United States. Tonight, we honor three different men. Uh, they have roots in the shore. They have... Uh, uh, relatives that live here too. Right. First is Private Lewis J. Miller. She was in the United States Army, uh, let's see, the D 1st Battalion Armed Service Replacement Depot. He was a rifle marksman and he received the World War II Victory, Victory Medal. And uh, he is brought forward by uh, his, uh, his daughter, Susan McDonald, and his granddaughter, Heather McDonald, who is the Vice President of the Museum. Uh, we also have Staff Sergeant Howard Hunterfunt. Everybody here in town knew him as Bootsy Hunterfunt. And Howard was in the, in the 10th Armored Infantry Division. And I'm going to read a little bit from the citation that he received. He received a Bronze Star for Valor in action at the Battle of the Bulge in the town of Echterbach, Luxembourg, on the German border on December 19, 1944. As a squad leader, he was in charge of a squad of infantrymen cut off from, from the body, main body. He was wounded by an exploding bazooka, a bazooka shell that hit an elite tank of which, which he was riding. With no regard for his personal safety, he led his men on foot through enemy fire to complete his mission. He brought back wounded soldiers and enemy prisoners. Additionally, he brought back valuable information on the enemy from the friendly troops that were in Ekermark in Luxembourg. The other one we're honoring is Staff Sergeant Daniel C. Scotty. He's in the United States Army and he served in the European Theater. And he's brought forward uh, by his daughter, uh, Angela Goodwin, and her sister is here too. All right, so these are the men. What you will see, you can come up and read what we have here. This will remain here for a week. Uh, all this information then will be brought into the museum and we'll have a book that you can come inside and see. All the information will be in there. Uh, it will be kept in our library forever, uh, commemorating everything that we've done here in the year of 2012. Scout Troop 70, is, we've had three scout troops help us over the weeks, Troop 70, 76, and the 71. Troop 70 uh, tonight will help us with the lowering the flag and raising another A-48 star flag. Troop 70, come forward.
flag that they would be raising is a 48 star flag, which was donated by the Jewish war veterans. you to take a look here and then come inside please join us inside for a little light we have some hot cider we have coffee we have some cookies and we'd like you to take a look at the exhibit that we have of our loved ones go to war uh, which Peggy Dellinger our exhibit chairman has put together it's been an exhibit please spend as much time as you'd like looking in there and we welcome you to come inside thank you